أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to today's class today we are going to start by looking at the rules uh, of pausing oh, just a few of them we're going to look at three in particular now just to remind you waqf means to stop or to pause during the recitation so when we are reciting the holy quran pausing at the end of a meaningful sentence or a verse with a break of breath is called waqf okay so when you're reading the holy quran you may uh, need to take a pause okay so at the end of the verse it's a sunnah to take a pause so we should take a pause at the end of each verse and you've seen what indicates uh, that this is the end of the verse so when you see that indication then we should take a pause okay other than that if you see that there is a long verse where you might not be able to carry your breath for the duration of that whole verse then you can take a pause you can do vakf uh, in the middle of the verse or at any point during the verse as well okay and it's always best to do vakf uh, at a meaningful place uh, in the in the verse and inshallah as you grow up as you start learning the meaning of the holy quran as well the translation things will make a bit more sense and things will be a bit more clearer but for now uh, you should know that if you need to take a pause uh, during the verse or at the end of the verse, then there are certain rules that we need to abide by. Okay, and those are the rules that we are going to be looking at from today. So the correct way of pausing at various types of Quranic words is explained below. Okay, so that's what we're going to be looking and that's what we're going to be explaining today. So today we are going to look at rule number one, two and three. So rules of waqf number one, two, and three. Okay, so the first rule is, okay, so for example, over here, you see this word. Let me highlight that for you quickly. So this is the word, okay? So let's say, for instance, this is the word that you'd like to take a pause at, okay? It may be at the end of the, ver the verse or it may be during the verse, but you want to take a pause at this word, okay? So what we must do is we must look at the stroke on the last letter of the word. So the last letter of this word, the liga, is the gurf. Okay, gurf is the last letter. Now we must look at the stroke on top of the letter or on the letter. Okay, so in this instance, the fata is the stroke that is found on the gurf. Okay, now what that means is that when we have had a look at the stroke, the stroke on the last letter will determine how we take a pause okay so if we find that at the last letter of the word you want to pause at it's a fatha then the fatha will change into a sukoon okay so if you find that there is a fatha on the last letter of the word that you would like to take a pause at then that fatha will change into a sukoon as you can see over here Okay, on top of the curve, the fatha that was there before has now turned into a sukoon. Okay, so this is how you would read the word in continuation, which means that if you were continuing to read after this word, then you would read it in its full form, you would read it as the lika. Okay, but if you want to take a pause after this word, then that fatha will become a sukoon, and you would read this word now as the lick the lick okay so you can see how our sound has changed from the lika to now the lick okay the fatha has changed into a sukoon so that is the rule when you see a fatha on top of the last letter of the word that you would like to take a pause at. Okay, now let's have a look at what will happen if the last letter of the word that you'd like to take a pause at is a kasra. You can see over here, this is the word yaumi. The meme has a kasra underneath it. Meme is the last letter, so it has a kasra underneath it. Now, what will happen over here? 
the same thing will happen as did with fatha. The kasra will change into a sukoon. Okay, so the kasra over here will now change into a sukoon over here that you can see. The meme now carries a sukoon. So in continuation, this word is read in its full form and it's read as yaumi. Yaumi. And if you'd like to take a pause, then this will become yaum. Yaum. We are ending the sound of the meme, okay, at the meme because it has a sukun on top of it. So that is what will happen if you see that the last letter has a kasra underneath it where you want to take a pause. Okay, now let's have a look at what will happen if the last letter of the word that you'd like to take a pause at is a dhamma. So you can see over here that this is the word na'abudu. And the last letter, dal, has a dhamma on top of it. This is a dhamma. Now, the same thing will happen as did with fata and kasra. So if you find that the last letter on the, uh, of the, on the word that you'd like to take a pause at is a dhamma, then that dhamma will change into a sukun. So you can see over here, that the dhamma on the dal is now a sukun. Okay, so wherever you see where you, where you want to take a pause, if the last letter carries a fatha or a kasra or a dhamma, then all three of those strokes will change into a sukun. Okay, so it's quite easy to remember that. Okay, so fatha, kasra, dhamma, we know that those are the three short strokes. Okay, so if you find that there is a short stroke on the last letter that you'd like to take a pause at, then um, that uh, short stroke of fatha, kasra, or dhamma will change into a sukun. Okay, so very simple rule for us to remember. So that is the basic, the first three rules of vakf. What you will do if you see a fata on the last letter, what you will do if you see a kasra on the last letter, or what you will do uh, when you see a dhamma on the last letter that you want to take a pause at. The same thing will happen. Those strokes will become a sukun. Okay, so one more time. This in continuation, this word over here in column number one, in row number one is the lika. And if you want to take a pause, it will become the lick, the lick. Okay, now for a kasra. So this word over here, we have a kasra at the end of the uh, the letter, um, at the last letter of the word. So this is in continuation. So if you were not to take a pause after this, we would read it as yo me. The kasra will be applied yo me. But if you want to take a pause, then that kasra will turn into a sukun, and we will read it as yom. And if we see a dhamma on the last letter, so for example, over here, this word is in continuation, we would read it as na'budu, na'budu. And if you want to take a pause, that dhamma will turn into a sukun, and we will read it as na'bud. Na'abud. Okay, so those were the three roles that we wanted to cover today. Inshallah, as you can see that there are uh, lots of other rules. So in total on this lesson, there are 22 rules that we are going to be covering. Okay, so um, please do make sure that you keep uh, revising the rules that we're learning so that you don't get left behind and you don't forget. Uh, because like I said, there are quite a, full, uh, a few rules that we'll need to uh, remember.